It started. Oh, right now? Yeah. Restart. I saw that from them. There will be no help. So, whenever Edgar Allan Poe was little, his parents were actors, and he really didn't know them because his father left him at a very young age, and his mother died whenever he was three. And so he had, like, basically kind of adopted parents, but they weren't incredibly close. And then he went to the University of Virginia, I believe, and, um... But he was not able to pay all that off. And then he came back from the university and he realized that his fiance was engaged to someone else. And so he left and then he tried to enroll in the military and go to West Point. But after one year there, he was kicked out because he couldn't get his stuff together. And then whenever he came home, he kind of kind of became an alcoholic a little bit, tried to gamble his way out of debt, but got himself into more debt. And so his adopted parents just kind of severed ties with him. They didn't want to be affiliated with him anymore. And so he moved in with his aunt, and he fell in love with his cousin. And they got married, and her name was Virginia. And after not not that long of marriage, uh, she passed away. And um, it kind of drove him to insanity, honestly. He uh, became more of an alcoholic. He was just never the same. He was already pretty messed up, but it just kind of set him over the edge, to me at least. And um, I think that's, like, his life wasn't the best. And so I think that's a lot of why he is the way he is. Or he wrote the way he wrote. Why? It's a puppy! Okay, so Edgar Allan Poe's writing style in The Pit and the Pendulum, he has a lot of polysyndeton. He says... Then a pause in which all is blank, then again sound and motion and touch. Then he does it again when he says, Then very suddenly thought and shuddering terror and earnest endeavor. And he uses a lot of an aphra. He uses then at the beginning of multiple sentences on this paragraph, then a pause, then very suddenly, then a rushing revival. He also uses a lot of am dashes. Okay, throughout the story, um, Poe uses a lot of repetition, and one of the words he constantly says throughout the short story is the word down. He says, um, steadily down it crept, and then uses down again when he says, certainly relentlessly down. And then states it once again when he says, still unceasingly, still undeniably down. His writing style intrigues many people because of the words he uses and the scenarios he throws out and um I personally don't like it but I'm sure that there's others who will enjoy twisted and story. His writing style is really appreciated because like how like high level vocabulary was like he was very smart very creepy but very smart but most of the like strangest people on the in this planet are extremely smart for example there's Hitler <laughs> or there's Jeffrey Dahmer or Jeremy Nikolai Jeremy Nikolai yeah. his philosophies honestly he's like the creepier the more tortured the better um he's a very disturbed guy literary criticism he uses really high vocabulary, and so it's harder for all of his readers to understand where he's coming from. And honestly, he's just really, really disturbing. Yeah. Um, I really don't have much criticism for Poe, except for the fact that his language is really elevated, as already stated. And I mean, I'm sure that was great for that time period, but now it's a little hard to comprehend whenever it's used so much. But uh, what I like a lot about Poe is... Um, his endings especially in this one the ending is not one that you would expect and I recommend it um, but his his works to me are kind of like a train wreck in a good way it's like you want to look away but you can't because like it's gross and it's weird and it's disturbing but at the same time you want to read more and that's my take on Poe. It's a girl in Poe I mean he's weird. Like, the time period of the Spanish in Inquisition and how like Protestants were put down very much by Catholics and like in order to understand that you understand why he's there And that's about it for the short story the pit and the pendulum by Edgar Allan Poe. I'd say that the genre is horror fiction Horror what what? <laughs>
So basically, what had happened was the um, Pit and the Pendulum takes place in Spain during the Spanish Inquisition, which was when uh, Protestants and Catholics that weren't like wholehearted Catholics per se, and they were tolerant, and Protestants were persecuted. Put him in this dungeon, and then they poison him with food and water, and he doesn't know this at first, and so he like keeps falling asleep, and then he realizes it, and so he doesn't drink or eat the water. And he tears off a piece of his clothing and he walks around in the dungeon to figure out how, like, big it is or whatever. And then he falls asleep again. And when he stands up to walk around again, he trips over that same piece of clothing, falls, and, like, his head is over an abyss. And then his body is, like, laying on the ground. But he realizes that there's a hole and he takes a rock and he like cuts it in two and he drops it to, and he like uses time to figure out how long it is. In there. And he just walks around and he finds some food and he falls asleep and he does that multiple times. And finally he finds himself in like tied down and he looks up and then there's a swinging pendulum that has um, a big blade attached to it and it's directly over his heart. And every time it swings, it gets lower and lower and lower. And he sees that there's food beside him. And he notices that the walls are closing in. And as they're closing in, rats are coming out. And so he rubs the food on the ropes that he's tied down to. And the rats gnaw through. And he's able to roll off. And then he explores the dungeon. Only to fall down a pit. But before... He, oh, I can't go that far. People like Justice, those are into creepy stuff. Um, no one under the age of 14, though. That stuff is really weird. I, no one under the age of 14, but definitely Justice. Strange, <laughs> twisted, creepy people like me. <laughs> they appreciate the deep, torture type things that go on. Would you want to read that book? No. Any murderers would enjoy this book because, I mean, or short story, rather. Um, he's being tortured. they probably enjoy that. Uh, kids our age would enjoy it. 16 and up. You really don't want anybody younger to read it because it's kind of creepy. Um, people interested in torture death, scary stuff, abysses, dungeons, jail, um, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh -huh. It's pretty good. That's about it. Mainly males would like this, I think. Um, people who are interested in um, torture, you don't necessarily have to be a fan of torture, but if you're interested in it, then yes. If you like watch like Law & Order, that sort of thing, this would probably interest you too. Because that special sort of unit. special victims unit, things like that that are a little bit dark but also pretty interesting, this will apply to you. <laughs> For the... <laughs> Stop. You did it I really don't want to be put on the spot. <laughs> Do you see my eyelashes on the thing? Oh, that makes it look better. No, there's no, no shadow. Taylor. I'm videoing. You can start. Yeah. And <laughs> we start. I can't do this. Wait, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you video me, like zoom in on me, and I'll explain what a pendulum. And uh, <laughs> look, you did this. And you make me nervous. Okay, you, know, you make me nervous. I can cut it out. Go. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, no, I was fixing my. <gasps> so what else do we do? <laughs> Um, he, uh, Poe, I mean, he's weird. 